It's absolutely vital to have a good, reliable backup of your Microsoft 365 data. That's data in OneDrive, SharePoint, Teams, email, that kind of thing. Now, I know there's versioning in these tools, but that's not a backup. If someone deleted all their files and then comes to you and asks you to get all their files back, they're gone. A little while ago, Microsoft released a solution to this, which they've unimaginatively named Microsoft 365 Backup. I expect the marketing team's renaming department will get their hands on it soon, so hopefully it stays called that for at least a few days after this video is released. Anyway, I've not configured this yet, so stick around if you want to see me try and get it right. From the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, if we head to Setup, and then scroll down, all the way to the bottom to Billing and Licenses, we have Activate Pay-as-you-go Services, because this is a pay-as-you-go service. This is not a license that you can just buy a license for 100 backups, for example. This is pay-as-you-go. So I'm going to choose Activate Pay-as-you-go, and here you can see we can just get started. So I'll choose Get Started, and now I need to... Oh, look, Syntex Services. Optical character recognition, document translation, autofill columns, and more. Set up, sets up billing for Microsoft 365 backup, archive, and SharePoint embedded also. Great. Well, that looks perfect. I'm going to choose that. And I need to either go to subscriptions or create a page you go subscription. So I already have one. So I can just click go, but you might want to set one up yourself, in which case just choose create a page you go sub here. I'll choose go to subscriptions. And it looks like it's going to take me just to my subscriptions, which... Okay, so I already have one. Um, I've got that. Next, find or create a resource group. So I'm going to create a resource group for this. I'm going to call it Microsoft... Well, let's call it Syntex, because that's what Microsoft called it. I'll call it Syntex, because I might want to do more than just backup in this. So I'll call it Syntex. There we go. I'm going to stick it in... Uh, the region of UK South, because that makes sense for me. I'll choose View and Create, and Create. Okay, job done. Back over to this. Now I need to select the Azure, Azure subscription. There you go, that one there. Select a resource group. I called it Syntex. There it is there. And the region, let's go with UK South, because that's where I put the resource group, and it wouldn't make sense to do anything else, but maybe you do need to change the resource group there as well. Uh, anyway. I am going to accept that, and let's take a quick look at the pricing details before I go any further. Uh, hopefully I can make changes to this and, and figure out how much it's going to cost before it actually charges me, but let's see. We'll choose save. I think the word minutes there was doing some heavy lifting. That is uh, is now finished. It felt like a little bit longer than a minute. Anyway, so we now have these things here all configured. So it's now set up for Syntex services. Great. And I have active when I choose that. Okay, good. So it's ready to go. I'll go back here. And here we have some Syntex services for document and imaging. Looks good. I'll play with that later on. Videos transcript for videos this sounds clever storage archive and backup we're going to start with backup because that's what i called this video backup okay it's currently turned off so i think i can see what we have to do here i think i've got it um, i'm going to choose turn on and and i'm going to choose save and see what happens. Um, it looks a little simple for now. Just turning it on, it told me it was going to charge me. Didn't really specify what it was going to charge me yet. It said I could look at some documentation to figure it out, but for now, it is currently turning on backup. I've got quite a few documents in this tenant. It's a, it's a lab tenant, but it's got some demo stuff that I use, so it's going to... It's going to back all that stuff up and I've got emails and stuff demo emails that I've got lying around so hopefully it's going to have some content to back up and hopefully it doesn't cost too much but we'll see ah excellent so it says it has uh, it tells us why it's weird that it now tells us why we should use it even though we've just turned it on it says turned on fine now next steps is start backing up your organization's data 
go to Microsoft 365 Backup and back up your organization's sites and mailboxes. Okay, let's see where we are. I've clicked the button, and this feature can only be accessed by users with the following roles. Global Administrator, Backup Administrator, and Exchange Administrator. And this account, Dean at Next Coffee, let's just see what permissions this user has. Um, global Administrator. That was definitely in the list. Um, okay, I'm going to head back to that bit where it just told me to get lost and switch to a permission to a to a account that has permission because I absolutely have permission. The other problem is I can't really see where to go to get back to here. Uh, it's in settings. Ah, Microsoft 365 backup. Okay. So I'm going to do that again. Uh, yeah. I do have permission though. Well, let's try the old fun thing of logging out and logging back in. Can't imagine why that would work, but Okay, restart the browser, sign back in, and go down to, well, show all, down to settings, Microsoft 365 backup, there it is. Just needed to log out, close the browser, sign back in. Obviously, that's what you need to do. Okay, so we are now at the Microsoft 365 backup section. We can back up and restore content from SharePoint, Exchange, OneDrive, and all the data will be stored within your Microsoft environment. Sounds perfect. We are going to look at SharePoint first, then OneDrive, and then Exchange. Okay, I'm going to set up a SharePoint backup policy. I'll choose next. We're going to select sites individually because I haven't got a CSV file. We'll do that. I'll select the sites I want. Let's go with all of these quite small, so that's fine. Uh, the policy name is all SharePoint sites. And it's going to back it up every 10 minutes, keep it for 14 days, and then one backup per week, retain for a year. Cool. And I'll choose create policy. Perfect. That seemed really easy. Now, it says zero site, but I'm sure it's just a time thing. It's fine. OneDrive. Uh, again, I'll choose next. I'm going to select my individual accounts. I'm going to select all of them because why not? Although I can probably not include my guest users or my service accounts because they're not going to have that much data. Certainly not stuff that I want to back up anyway. Okay. Choose next and call it OneDrive. It's going to do it exactly the same retention period every 10 minutes. Sounds good to me. Creating that policy. Activated. Done. Exchange. This is just, you know, pretty, pretty um, important as well. Backing up all your email mailboxes and stuff. Choose next. We're going to select them all individually again. Now, I guess one thing probably the most important thing when I'm selecting these SharePoint sites probably won't be created that often. Users with mailboxes probably will be created quite a lot. So if you do select them um, individually, then you'll have to add more uh, mailboxes add as you have new users join the tenant. So that's quite probably quite important. If we use a dynamic rule instead, let's see what happens there. Backup mailboxes in distribution lists or security groups that might make more sense okay uh, and let's look at a filter instead again just distribution lists and security groups so I guess it's pretty important to have a security group or a distribution list that contains all let's see if I've got one called all nope um, Every no, I don't have that. All, all devices. That's not going to help. Users. I don't have all of my users. So yeah, I'm not going to be able to create a dynamic rule here. Instead, I'm going to select the mailboxes individually, grab all of those users again 
for my email and just have to live with the fact that I'm going to have to add these manually in the future. I think it might be a good idea for me to create a dynamic group that contains everyone and then select that instead as a security group. But for now, I'll just do email. Okay. Again, every 10 minutes, mailbox backups are kept for a year. So none of that 14 days stuff that we saw earlier on. I'll choose create. And it's done. It says it might take a few hours. You can see the policy status and mailbox backups on the policy page. Let's choose done and go to the policy page. So that's all of the information we've just configured. Now I assume that's the restoration tab is where we're going to be able to see how we can restore, how we can create a restoration of a different of one of the different types of backup that we've got maybe restore a mailbox and that kind of thing. But that was incredibly quick to set up backup for my entire organization. I have no idea how much it costs. I suggest you take a look at the, uh, the documentation to figure out how much it would cost for your organization. For mine with really tiny demo environment stuff, it's not really gonna be representative of a, a real environment. So do figure out how much data you've got and how much it'll cost to back up and all that kind of stuff before you turn this on so you don't get a surprise in your Azure bill. But I think that protection is really valuable as well. Now, I should mention that this is only backing up email, OneDrive and SharePoint. But if you, and that's content, right? Not the configuration of those. If you want to back up your configuration of things like Entra, conditional access and Intune and that kind of thing, you know, to protect from admin mistakes of deleting stuff or, you know, even something more malicious, then you probably want to look at something more like Software Central's Tenant Manager, which does exactly that. But as you can see, Microsoft 365 Backup exists. It's currently called Microsoft 365 Backup. It may change at some point in the future. I don't know. And it might be the right solution for you. See you next time.